Did you know that the order in which you eat the food on your plate can have a dramatic impact on your blood sugar levels, which can have a massive impact on weight loss and your overall health? When I came across this hack, I was absolutely mind blown because of how easy it is and how you don't have to change what you eat, but just the order in which you eat it. So in this video, I'm gonna explore how this works and what this order is help you to lose weight and improve your health. Let's begin. Hello friends, welcome to another video and thank you again for tuning in. And in this video, I'm going to look and talk about how you can lose weight, but also massively improve your health by not changing what you eat necessarily, but changing just the order in which you eat it. When I came across this hack, I was absolutely mind blown because the significant impact this can have on losing weight and on improving your health, as well as many other things like improving energy levels. So before I go through what this order is, I need to explain how this works. And this basically works because of the impact that it has on your blood glucose levels. So what is that? That is basically the amount of sugar that's in your blood at one time. And this is gonna change the most when you have a meal. So if you eat a ton of sugar, for example, that sugar will go straight through your system and straight into your blood because it is in the form that your body needs it. So it's very, very quickly absorbed into the blood. We know that the more that your blood sugar varies, so the higher the highs and the lower the lows, the worse it is for a house, but also the higher the spikes, the more that your body is going to naturally go into a state where it starts to think that it needs to store the energy. And it stores this in the form primarily as fat. Because our bodies are really designed in times when we would have periods of time where we wouldn't eat anything. And then when we could get hands on food, our body would then need to store up as much as it can for the times when we're not eating. The problem now is that we're in a society where we don't really have those times where we don't have food and we pretty much have unlimited access to food, which has brought us some issues. It's obviously a very, very good thing, but it has brought some issues in the sense that it means that we are more susceptible now to just keep gaining weight because we're not in the times of um, not having any any food, so fasting, etc. And this is actually why fasting can be uh, very, very beneficial. So how can we lower this blood glucose variability? Now we can do this in many, many different ways. We can do this in terms of what we eat, and that's absolutely uh, important. But one of the easiest ways that gives you the biggest and largest results in regards to the ratio between effort and results is the order in which we eat the food. Now, just before I go through this order, I do just want to ask for a very, very quick favor. The majority of people that watch my videos are not yet subscribed. If I can just ask one favor from you, please can you support this channel, help me to continue doing what I'm doing to help people to optimize their health, to live more fulfilled and longer and happier and more joyful lives by just going down and just hitting that subscribe button. It will mean a lot to me and my pledge to you is I'm gonna to continue to make uh, these videos as best as I can and with as much integrity as possible. Thank you. So what is this order in which we need to eat our food? The order is that if you eat your vegetables first, that is the main one, eat your vegetables first, followed by your fat and protein, followed by the carbs and the sugars. If we eat the vegetables first, what vegetables contain? They don't just contain all the vitamins and minerals and, and nutrients that are all very, very good for you, but they also contain fiber. And fiber has a role in slowing down your digestion. So fiber is not absorbed uh, into your system, but it slows down the transit of food. And that's important, particularly when you have sugar and carbs that follow it. Because sugar gets into your blood so quickly, if you have fiber first, then the sugar is not gonna go into your blood as quickly, which means that spike is gonna be a lot less. Which means by simply eating your vegetables first, means you can still eat that sugar, but you're gonna have less of a spike, which means you can eat the same foods afterwards and actually 
lose weight or put on less weight. Now the next food is fat and protein. Fat and protein don't spike your sugar in the same way that sugar and carbs. And the main reason is because it's not in the, in the right form, it's not in sugar. But it can convert to sugar, but this process takes time, which means that if, for example, the keto diet, which is based on high fat and, and moderate protein, by eating those foods and keeping your carbs really, really low, means that the body has to convert that, particularly that fat, into glucose or sugar, but it does it quite slowly, which means you get a slow release over a long period of time, which is much easier for the body to keep those blood sugars than level. If you're eating sugar, particularly on an empty stomach, you're gonna get these really big spikes and it's gonna go really low and really big and really low all, all day long. And although the body does have systems in place to keep that level via the ability of the hormone insulin, which can reduce those and blood sugars, the more that we put it under this challenge, if it goes above and beyond what the body is capable of, then it's not gonna be able to keep it as steady and you are gonna get these big fluctuations. And this is what can lead to things like diabetes and different diseases, but also in the short term, it can give you a bit of a roller coaster in regards to your energy levels. Then the last food that I mentioned that you wanna eat, you wanna eat your carbs and sugars first. And the reason why is because they go into the blood so quickly, if they follow foods that are gonna slow down the transit, they can't then quite get into the blood quite as quick, which then again means you're gonna get a slower release. Now the question is, does this actually work? It's all good in theory. There is research on this, which uh, this research came out this year. And the research showed that eating your vegetables first, so they looked at people, ate the vegetable first, they did this in non-diabetic people, and then looked at the glucose curve or the glucose variability compared to those that didn't eat their vegetables first. And they found that there was a significant reduction. It was around 73% reduction in your glucose spike simply by eating your vegetables first compared to having, say, sugar or carbs just on an empty stomach. So how do we put this into practice? Here are my top three tips that you can put into practice today that are super, super easy. And because they're easy, it's easy to then continue to do this down the line. This is some of the issues when we have, say, restrictive diets, where, say, you're only allowed to eat salads, is because, firstly, you don't feel that satisfied with that. And if you're restricting your calories, you're often gonna feel hungry most of the time. So that's all well and good while your motivation is there, but as soon as your motivation starts to fall, then so will your diet. And they say around 95% of diets actually fail. So I do believe in, in making it a lifestyle change, and if we can make it easy, then it means that we can actually do it for the long term. So here are my top tips. With every meal that you have, try and have a salad first. So make a salad on the side and then try to eat that first before you then you eat the rest of your meal. And if you are gonna eat in that order, then you wanna eat your salad, then you wanna eat, say, your, your meat, and then afterwards you wanna eat, say, things like chips or potatoes, and then you wanna eat something sugary at the end. You can still have pudding. You, you can still have sweet stuff, although of course it's better in a way not to have it. But if you are gonna have it, my top tip is don't have it on an empty stomach. By having it on an empty stomach means that sugar goes straight into the blood and you're gonna get this massive spike. If you have that donut in your kitchen and you want to eat it, fine. But try to have a salad first or try to just eat it after your meal so that spike isn't gonna be quite as high. So the first tip is to eat a salad first before you have the rest of your meal. My second tip, as I just mentioned, is don't have sugars or carbs on an empty stomach. So eat something before it, so have it at the end of the meal. And my, my third tip is don't start the day on sugar or refined carbs. Because what that's going to do is firstly, as I mentioned, it's going to spike that blood sugar. But the other thing is that it's not going to make you very full. It's not going to give you the satiety. It's not going to give you the feeling of fullness for very long. It will initially, and it might make you satisfied initially, but give it a couple of hours and maybe even less for some people. And you're going to very quickly then going to want more food. So my suggestion is have some protein and fat for breakfast, particularly if you're going to choose one meal to do that with, do it breakfast because that's going to help set you up for the rest of the day. The problem is, for some reason, we've got very used to having sugar for breakfast. And a lot of the cereals that we see out there, despite some, so much of the marketing and the packaging, 
is basically just sugar or very refined carbs it's as close to sugar as you can get that's going to just spike your blood sugar and if you're somebody that gets slump in the, in the mid-afternoon either you feel like you just need to sleep or you just have to keep on eating throughout the day this i'm pretty sure is going to make a big difference to you so start the day with eggs and avocado or salmon or uh, even a fry up is better particularly if it's good quality foods I start the day with jumbo oats, and although that is um, carbs, um, firstly they're jumbo oats, which means they're gonna, they need a bit more work to be broken down, which means a slightly slower release. But secondly, I dress it up, i.e. I put a lot of fiber in it. So you don't just get fiber from vegetables, but you can also get it from nuts and seeds. So I put mixed seeds on there, I put chia seeds, I put flax seeds, and then I put walnuts, and then I put full fat yogurt. So I'm mixing it with those things, which means that I get a slower release of sugar throughout the day into my blood. And I always find that after my breakfast, I'm absolutely fine all the way up until lunch. I don't even feel like I want to snack or, or I want to eat anymore. And that's the other thing we're going to start losing weight. If you have meals that are higher in fat and protein, you're not gonna to want to eat as often in the day. And you're not gonna crave sugars and carbs as often which means it's so much easier to actually eat less um, in the day. So what you eat is important and then how you eat it is also important. Now, I hope that's been useful and I hope that that is really, really easy just to start implementing. If you're interested in this topic and you want to see or read further in regards to uh, this, this hack, I got this from somebody called the Glucose Goddess. This, this, she has an Instagram account that I'm gonna put in the description that I would highly recommend that you uh, go go check out because there's so much information on that account, as well as loads of testimonials of people that have followed her hacks. And there are other hacks as well. This is just one of the, the, the top ones that I came across. And people that have gone through these hacks have managed to massively improve their health, ma massively improve their diabetes symptoms and, and their blood glucose scores. And they've been able to lose weight amongst a whole host of other things. So if you're interested in, in what I've been talking about in this video, go check out that, that account. It's in the description. I've got most of my inspiration for this video from this person who runs this account. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on my next video next week. Take care. Bye-bye.